Hey guys, and welcome to the fourth and final episode of my most used products in 2021. This is the lifestyle and random kind of thing. I'm also going to be including some music in here as well because I wanted to talk about my favorite music of the year, but I didn't really know where to put that except for in this episode, so I hope you're okay with that. Um, I also am not going to be holding up any products during this because I didn't want to get anything on me and some of it is like detergent and like bleach and stuff, so <laughs> that sounds weird, but it'll make sense when you get to that portion of the video. But I just didn't feel like dragging all this stuff in here and then some of them I just could not uh, bring in here because they're too big. So I'm gonna pop pictures on the screen. So I hope that's okay with you guys, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. So one of my most used products of 2021 was Clorox spray bleach. So I'm inserting a picture of each of these products. This is the best stuff ever. You can use it on laminate. Um, you can use it on like kitchen counters. It is bleach, so don't get it on your clothes, but it does a great job of really sterilizing and cleaning up messes. I also use it to like quick clean my shower and I used it to clean my laminate floors in the kitchen. I'll put pictures. We had stains in our white laminate floors. We like the flooring, but they get dirty so easily, especially when it like rains and gets really muddy and the dogs drag it in. But as you can see um, in the after picture, they look much wider and brighter than they do in the before. It took me an hour, a roll and a half of paper towels and um, three Swiffer like pads to clean up the floor and make it that white, but it was totally worth it. And thank you Clorox Spray Bleach for making it happen. So yeah, Dollar Tree tissues. I'm gonna insert a picture. Um, they're very particular Dollar Tree tissues. Oh no, I have some right here. Oh, that's so funny because I use them. This is kind of what the boxes look like. They have each of their like own different little design. I know I said I wasn't gonna bring products in, but it was literally sitting right in front of me. And so this, um, I wanted to get tissue boxes that I could have everywhere where I didn't need like an actual tissue box holder in every room because tissue box holders and like trash cans and stuff like that are so expensive for some reason. So I wanted something that was already really cute and not expensive. And these are actually really high quality tissues and I like the way they work and feel. They don't make me get weird rashes or whatever when I need to blow my nose a lot. So I also really like the all and seventh generation free and clear detergent. Those are my most used detergents of the year. They're just so good. Um, I have really sensitive skin, especially like on my face. So I don't like to wash my towels and sheets, especially with fragrance detergent. And both of these brands just work wonders and I really like them and honestly each of the bottles last a decent amount of time. I also really like um, a botanical detergent. It's by Gain. I think I'll have a picture on the screen. It smells so good. I use this on our clothes because I was tired of running through detergent so fast and I wanted something that smelled really nice but I didn't want to buy fragrance beads so I went ahead and bought this plant-based detergent. I never was in, like intending on buying just plant-based. Um, not that I have anything against it but I just ended up loving the smell of this one and the smell lasts for days. It's so nice and we haven't had any negative reaction on our skin or anything like that with this detergent. To get stains out, um, I love Shout Stain Remover. Thomas won't, he won't claim it, but he gets stuff all over his clothes all the time when he is eating. I thought I was a klutz. It doesn't happen to me nearly as much as it happens to him. But this like shout stain remover with like the little brush on the top is so good at getting stains out. Sometimes I'll let it just sit there and then I'll scrub it. Um, sometimes it'll be, have to sit there for a day. Sometimes it'll have to sit there for like an hour or five minutes or whatever. I once got red wine out of his like khaki like they're a light khaki AFCO shorts, it was red wine. Red wine doesn't ever come out of anything, but this got it out and I was really proud of myself for that. So this stuff is awesome. I can't find it anywhere now though, cause they're sold out everywhere. So I'm on the hunt to find some. These color catchers are also really great as well. I love them. Um, I actually tested them heavily by putting a very red towel and a very white shirt in the same load to test it. I don't usually do my laundry like this. Um, I also never put towels with my clothes, but this was a ratty, like, white t-shirt that I used to dry my hair. So I was like, well, if it gets ruined, it's okay. The color catcher stopped any red from mixing with white. There was no pink clothing or anything like that, um, and the color stayed intact. So I absolutely love these. I've been using them for years. This is definitely an investment that um, I fully think is worth it and highly encourage other people to use as well, because sometimes you need to mix clothes and you're not really sure 
if the colors will mix together or if you'll have a mess in your hands. So it's always just best to kind of put color crutcher in there just just in case, you know, and I think these are the best. So another most used product of 2021, which is very hard because I got it in November, is my record player. So the record player I got, it, it was my birthday present from Thomas, and I have used it so much since then. My birthday is in early November, by the way. Uh, but I used it a lot and will continue to use it. So I did want to include it in here. This was also one of the things that I was not able to bring into this video because it is huge. But it's a record player, cassette player, Bluetooth, um, and a CD player all in one. And it's by Victrola, which is one of the like best brands for records and has been since record players were like invented. From what I've heard, I mean, I wasn't around then, but you know, I can only speak the information of what I read from other places, other sources. But yeah, I absolutely love it. So now we're on to music. I've got quite a few things to mention for music. Um, first, one of my most listened to albums was Halsey's album called If I Can't Have Love, I Want Power. Oh my gosh. There's only one song on there that I won't listen to. It's called uh, Bells at Santa Fe. It just has some stuff in there that I don't agree with. But the rest of the album I really, really like. And I think it is such a good punk -y rock album. It was uh, produced by Atticus and whatever the guy, other guy's name is from Nine Inch Nails. So it's got that kind of vibe if you're into that. If you haven't listened to this album and you like Nine Inch Nails, I think that you would really like this album. And the lyrics are excellent too. I think it's definitely battling for her best album to date. I really love the song Honey, um, You Got, You Asked For This, Whispers, Lilith, Easier Than Lying, Girls Can't, okay, you know what? I'm just listing all the songs. I love all the songs. Uh, so next, uh, another most listened to album was Olivia Rodriguez, Rodriguez? Rodrigo, Rodrigo, okay, I can't say this. What is wrong with me? Olivia Rodrigo's Sour album. Love this entire album. I know that it's definitely written from a 17 slash 18 year old girl's perspective, but you can't deny that it's, it's just a good album. It's excellent songwriting. It's just an excellent album. I love it. Uh, Jealousy Jealousy is one that I, like is a song on there that I really resonate with. It's probably the one that I resonate with the most. So if you haven't checked that particular song, I definitely check it out. But honestly, I just think that Olivia Rodrigo is really an excellent songwriter, especially for her age. And she's got great vocals. People can say what they want, but just go watch some live performances of her singing and then you will get to experience how well she can actually sing, especially like the NPR Tiny Desk thing. She really showcases her raw vocals there and I think they're so good. Obviously, I was gonna include Taylor Swift in this. Uh, Red, Taylor's version, another most listened to album. What can I say? I am a hardcore Swifty. Love All Too Well, 10 minute version. Love the entire album. I love the entire album when it first came out. My sophomore year of high school, 10-ish years later, it's just as amazing, if not better. I make Thomas listen to it endlessly. It's, it's a sickness really, but I'm okay with it. Fearless, Taylor's version, really listened to this a lot when it first came out and listened to it throughout the year as well. I still think that Red is just a more mature album. Um, I know it's kind of like an, it's a mess of an album. It's supposed to be, it's like a, it's like supposed to be an album that like represents the heartbroken and Fearless is more like a teenager. But that was one that was like nostalgic for me. Fearless was just like something that I looked back on and I was like, how old was I like? It was released in 2009. So I was 13 when it came out. <sighs> quick math. <laughs> um, actually that wasn't very quick math. It took me a while. Fearless really loved, um, the Way I Loved You, that's a really good song from there. I really liked um, Don't You. I felt like that was an underrated like vault song from Fearless. And I, that was probably one of my most listened to songs from the Taylor's version Fearless album. And then I have two honorable mention albums, Folklore and Evermore. I listened to them a lot during 2021. Evermore, just, I feel like Evermore is so underrated. Folklore, I think, is rated the way it should be. I think a lot of people appreciate it, and it should be. It's excellent songwriting, excellent storytelling, love it. But Evermore is just like, it's so pushed aside, even by Taylor Swift herself. She didn't even recognize its first birthday. That's rude. But I think Evermore is wonderful. Um, a lot of the songs on there I relate to or have related to in the past. Like, not with my relationship with Thomas or anything, but with like other stuff in my life. That is pretty much it. I hope you guys liked this series. Um, I hope that it kind of gave you a good idea about 
what I really used and loved throughout the year of 2021. I'm very ready to get 2022 started and kicked off. And I, um, I just hope that you guys are having a great new year and really enjoying it so far. And I hope you guys have a great year and, you know, you reach the dreams or goals that you have for yourself this year or you just reach the goal of being happy. I know a lot of us kind of um, are dealing with being unhappy or just feeling unfulfilled. I know I do. So I hope that you were able to feel happier and more fulfilled in 2022. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys liked this video and this series. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the notification bell down below and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. I will see you guys in the next video. We have a lot of exciting things coming and I hope you guys are very excited. But uh, yeah, I will see you guys later. Bye.